These are the new System Sensor L Series LED fire alarm devices. Today we're going to be taking a look at them. Hey there everyone. I finally got some of these new System Sensor LED L Series devices. I've got one ceiling mount and one wall mount horn strobe. Today we're going to be taking a look at them. I know I'm not the first to show off or review these devices. However, I'm still going to be sharing my thoughts and doing my own video on these new devices. There is some controversy around the appearance of these devices, which I will be sharing my own thoughts on them. I will be mostly looking at these devices from the practical, realistic standpoint of an electrician or fire alarm technician who will be the majority that are installing these devices. Let's start off today's video by doing an unboxing of these devices, giving my first thoughts on them. I will say I have already opened the ceiling mount version and I have seen it. However, the wall mount version I have never seen once in my life in person. I've only seen the images online. Planning to get these devices much, much earlier. However, some problems with shipping due to my location in Canada made for a much longer wait time to end up with these devices. And I had to end up waiting entirely for three failed shipments before I gave up and ordered these on eBay. Something I wanna add to what I said about looking at this from a realistic standpoint. And as far as the appearance goes, I'll talk about how I feel about it once I open it up, as I still haven't seen them. But don't expect too exciting of a reaction from me. I don't usually get too excited, especially not for this. Not trying to downplay this or anything, but... Let's start off with the ceiling mount one. I have seen this device already as I did open this one up to make sure I got the right thing and it didn't have any instructions with it so I couldn't tell what was going on. Here is our ceiling mount device and our mounting base. And I will also give a comparison to what these devices replaced. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at our wall mount horn strobe. This guy is P2W LED. Mounting bracket. And boom, the device. All right. Okay, so this is what we've got here. My personal thoughts, not that they matter or that system sensor gives a crap. Um, they look all right. This one I knew was going to look fine. I saw it from the pictures like, okay, yeah, that looks fine. It's just a ceiling mount. This one I looked at the pictures and initially thought, wow, that thing is strange looking. But now seeing it in uh, 3D, not from just an image straight on, it looks all right. For the most part, significantly bumped out, much like how the low frequency variants are. I wasn't aware of that. Other than that, there is nothing too strange looking about it. The strobe actually doesn't look too strange at all. The speaker grill is slightly off centered, which I guess looks a little bit odd, but it's not too bad. The candela selection also isn't centered. Whereas the mounting brackets, they don't look anything too special at all. And on the back, the biggest difference you would notice is the Candela Select is no longer a slider, but a rotary dial. Of course, that is the same on both of these guys. Let me actually explain a little bit of information on these new LED variant of the L-Series. These were designed as a replacement for the Xenon strobe variant. Now Honeywell says the Xenon strobe variant will be discontinued as of December 15th, 2023, and speaker strobes and weatherproof versions of the L series will be introduced in early 2024, which will replace the Xenon variant of L series and Spectre Alert Advanced series. We had official product release information from Honeywell slash system sensor in October of 2023. However, the devices had been leaked previously in August of 2023, as many of you may have seen on Instagram and other social media platforms. In general, I have no problem with these new devices. 
I think they are great for the lower current draw and hopefully I would assume longer strobe life. Where these LED devices shine is, no pun intended, is their lower current draw. System Sensor says that these new LED versions have on average a 40% lower current draw. Now that lower current draw is something that a lot of people don't quite understand. I've heard misconceptions that that is to save on the cost of power, which is simply not true at all. If you were to do any calculations, you would find that even a fire alarm system left on for 24 hours at 100 devices, if you calculate that current draw and the average electrical cost per utility, if you have 100 of these devices running for 24 hours, that's going to be around $5, which in the grand scheme of things is very, very, very minimum. And that is not the intended purpose of the lower current draw. The lower current draw will indeed save money, but it is nothing to do with the cost of electricity. Fire alarm systems are a very minimal electrical draw. You're already sitting at very low numbers as far as amperage and wattage, and uh, that's at 24 volts. You'll already have almost a four or five times factor of your voltage being stepped down and therefore your current going up than you would see on the primary side of a fire alarm power supply. Where these save money by their lower current draw is materials. Lower current draw for fire alarm systems means a few different things, which I'll explain. First of all, it means as far as a load calculation of that fire alarm system, you will end up with a smaller battery size calculation. You will calculate a smaller sizing of your backup batteries. You will also have less current on your NAC circuits in general, which means you will potentially need less of them to power your devices. If you have less current draw, you can get more devices on that NAC circuit, therefore needing less available NAC circuits for a given building, meaning less NAC boosters and booster panels to support those devices. Also, if you're familiar with Ohm's law, more resistance on a given wire, and that resistance becomes more of an issue the higher you go with current. Therefore, that equals voltage drop. Your voltage has to be within acceptable parameters for these devices to run, and to do a size calculation of your conductors for what needs to be ran, that is determined by the current. If you can lower that current, so your voltage drop is reduced, therefore you need a smaller sized wire to accomplish the same task. And to stretch that idea even further, that can have effect on your conduit fill and you will end up with a smaller, potentially smaller conduit size, therefore saving money on not only materials of the actual wire you have to run, but that conduit itself can be smaller. Mostly you're gonna save on batteries and NAC extenders, and to a certain degree, your wire size could potentially be downscaled a little bit for voltage drop. Another feature of these new devices is the voltage test points. System Sensor calls these DVM. That might stand for digital voltage meter, maybe? I don't actually, I don't actually know. That are these test points on these devices. If you can see the holes in there, that is intended to be able to insert a meter probe to be able to get your voltage readings without taking this off the wall. You can stick the probes of your meter right into the device and meter voltage that way. So the idea of that is save time on your voltage and end of line resistance tests and will reduce the chance of losing your screws or the devices itself. I see it also, they didn't list it, but less wear and tear of the device this screw is only gonna take so many cycles, eventually it's going to wear out. Is that very realistic to happen? Probably not. Any less wear on the device is better. Now something they don't list, but is an assumption I can make, is that under a reverse polarity situation, these won't work and they won't do anything to the circuit. With the System Sensor Spectre Alert Advanced Series, under a reverse polarity situation, those would short out the NAC circuit, which, is good and bad. And the L series, and I'm assuming these guys too, did not do that. They just simply wouldn't work, which is also good and bad. So to short out the circuit, the good in that 
is it makes you aware of a reverse polarity device. You then know, hey, there's a device on the circuit that won't work. The bad part is that affects your whole NAC circuit. So if it's one of 100 devices, that one device being wired backwards just took out the capability for that whole circuit to function. That's the bad. The good and the bad about not shorting it out is the good is obviously the opposite of that is your circuit isn't affected by one device and will still operate. The bad is you would not know about it unless you walked around listening to devices sounding or visually check the strobes. That's the only way you're gonna know it's wired backwards. I guess system sensor kind of weighed out the odds there. You must have figured it's better to, to risk a couple devices not working or potentially the whole circuit than I guess one device wired backwards taking down the whole circuit. And I'm assuming that continued with these LED versions. Another advantage to these over the older previous generation of Xenon strobes is your strobe lenses on these and the strobes themselves, if you look at them, they are exactly the same for the ceiling mount and the wall mount. Now, the advantage of that is your colored strobe lenses. It doesn't matter if it's for a, a ceiling or a wall mount, that same lens will work on either device. Now, for now, as of this being recorded, the only variant they have out currently is the horn strobe version. However, later on in 2024, they will replace the rest of the L series lineup. So they will have a chime variant, speaker variant. They didn't actually list low frequency sounder. So I'd assume they would be replacing it as they say, they're going to replace the lineup and that's in the lineup, but they didn't list it. So take that for what you will. And there also will be, they said replacing the outdoor variant, which if you actually look at the wording, they say replacing the L series and advanced series. Now they had to include advanced series there because they actually never came out with a uh, L series outdoor unit. To come out with an LED outdoor unit, they're not actually replacing an L series device because it never existed. They're replacing the, the advanced series outdoor devices. These are UL and ULC listed, ULC for Canada. And then I would assume they will also get a CSA listing as well. These have the same low and high volume settings as well as the same Candela Select, which I could not remember this in my head. I got a look. Wall is 15, 30, 75, 95, 110, 135, 185. Holding up the wrong one, that's the wall. Ceiling is 15, 30, 75, 95, 115, 150, and 177 candela. So same candela select. These also are automatic voltage selection between 12 and 24 volts. If it's at 15 or 30 candela, if it's above that 30 candela, the way I interpret that is if it's above 30 candela, it has to be powered off 24 volt. That's just how I interpret how they describe that. These mounting brackets for these still use the same design with the shorting springs is what that means is I'm sure we're all aware if the device isn't on the mounting bracket, the system will be in trouble for an open NAC circuit that still has the same function. Where the device has to be there to poke down on this tab. Just as before, there is a two wire and a four wire variant and as I see this, looking at a updated data sheet, trying to find some extra information I hadn't shared. This one now says 24 volts DC slash FWR. I'm telling you as a fact, it did not say that before. And that's why some people told me it did not. Turns out in the end, I guess I'm right. I kind of was arguing with these people saying there's no way. And then eventually I just gave up on arguing because well, I could be wrong, but I also don't have any proof. There is proof now. So I was right and everything I said earlier about how do you have this called a replacement device when it can't operate under the same conditions, blah, 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 is not the case. If you're, I don't know how I edited this. I probably edited out everything I said earlier because that's now not true because I didn't get this updated data sheet. But basically at the beginning, they only had it listed as DC. Uh, filtered and not FWR. However, that has now changed, which is very, very good. And that just turned these devices a whole lot better to me. I was mostly like these devices, except for it's, it's that one thing. It's that one factor that was like, oh, that is not good. So these are fully the same as the old ones with 
they're the same and better. There is no negative factor of these that the old ones did that these don't, unless you don't like the look of them. Which to that I say, well, personally, my humble opinion of them myself is, I don't give a sh uh, as As someone who installed these at work, I don't care. It's going to install just the same to me. Uh, as someone who's been a part of verifications, it's gonna be exactly the same. And as far as a collector, well, maybe I'm not that much of a collector because everyone seems to have their strong opinions on these. I don't care. I feel like uh, I'm expected to have an opinion as someone, I guess, I don't know, people say I'm part of the Fireland community. I don't feel like I'm part of the Fireland community. I, uh, no, I don't really collect things. I just, I don't know, well, I like showing you. I don't know. I don't care. It's just a fire alarm. And to the general public, no one's going to notice. The general public has no idea. Obviously, in the U.S., you guys need um, voice-assisted systems just to tell you what to do. So, clearly, people are not that aware. So, these are fully compatible with all older designs back to 1997, which would have been the Spectre Alert Classic variant. These do come in English only, and... Spanish only, I believe, and then English Spanish and English French and French only. Wiring is the same, except 18 to 12 gauge wire, 10% to 93% humidity. I can't speak for if that's the same as the previous, as I haven't looked up a document. Anyways, guys, let's actually sound these things off and actually look at them. I know that's what a lot of you guys want to see. I've taken a way deeper dive into the specifications and differences than most people have. Most have just, uh, opened them up, said that they either like the look of them or they're ugly as hell, and I uh, haven't really gone any more in depth. I wanted to do something a little different. I'm not the first to do it, so I might as well do something different. Anyways, let's actually hear all these sound, and more importantly, look, because they're gonna sound the same. off topic i've got to say this uh 10 ud or this is sfp 10 ud but this is one of the snappiest panels i don't know if the processor in it is quicker compared to a equally modern panel like the 9200 or even a more capable panel like my 320 they aren't anywhere close to how snappy the navigating this system is like it's just instant that's what we want right there user banner boom that's better one here we are going to put this to system sensor sync sync system sensor and just for fun even though it's not legal in canada anymore or a lot of places for matter of fact we are going to have selective silence or sync mute enabled there we go look at this ceiling mount one we'll leave the candela set at 15 for now and we will set our coating to temp 3 low something new i see with these devices is there is temporal 3 slash temporal 4 low i'm not aware of currently system sensor having something that can do mixed coating through the same device, Temporal 3 or Temporal 4. I'm wondering if this is a capability that is built into this vice that is going to be supported by a future sync protocol on maybe newer panels, or is it already supported and I am simply unaware of it? I might make myself look like a complete idiot because this is already out, but I've never seen this before on a device and I didn't know it was something System Sensor did. I was not aware of that anyways. Just something I thought I'd point out. We'll leave the candela set where it is for now. Also, you can see we have our candela select, but then you see it stops there at 177, which is the max candela. And then next we have FCP. That is another thing that is starting to seem like candela selectable from the fire alarm panel, much like what Simplex does is this hinting at a future that is going to be very different. This to me looks very much like a future of different protocols that currently, to my awareness, aren't out, but this device will support. Here is just the same 
with positive on positive. This is just a quarter watt resistor, which my recommendation is to never buy quarter watt resistors. They are too difficult to try and get into place. Half watt resistors are what you want to get. And we will install our ceiling mount device, which will lock in at the top and snap in. We don't need to screw it shut. It does latch and the trouble has cleared. Let's go ahead and see what this device sounds and looks like. Okay, very interesting. At first, you'd think the thing wasn't even working because it didn't come on at first. The, actually, the strobe flashed before anything, which even adds to my point of something's changed in this device. It's looking for more information before starting is what that tells me. Is Because it's waiting and the strobe comes on first, this device is waiting to pick up more information from its power. It's waiting for more pulses, or some sort of signal, it's waiting for something to make sure it knows what it needs to turn the horn on to do. Does it need to turn it on to do temp three, temp four? That's just my opinion. I haven't been trained or educated on this, just my thought process. Something else is the strobe flash is indeed longer, which I was expecting for LED. Actually, some other brands have had recalls due to the LED flashing too long which I've seen a lot of comments saying, oh, system sensor is so late to the game with this. Other companies have had it for years. And yes, that's true. My jab back, not that I'm defending system sensor, is those other companies did that and then had to recall their product because of issues with it. So, so sometimes, especially in the life safety field, I always, I always say that fire alarm is 10 to 20 years behind the rest of technology, which is true. It's life safety, it's got to work, and it's got to be tried and true and work absolutely every time, which is why Fire Alarm is not always the newest technology out there because it needs to make sure it's reliable. Just like other companies came out with LED strobes and then had to recall them due to issues. System Sensor waited a couple of years and hopefully did it right. I'm not advertising System Sensor. They are actually my chosen brand. I like their line of products best due to their their much more customizable what you can get i find but that's just my opinion it other companies have great stuff too this strobe is still audible not quite as loud as a xenon strobe but it is still there let's do that again let's uh re-alarm Silence is really quick. Here I've got the lights off now. I'm actually recording this at 30 frames per second. Usually to capture strobes, it's pretty unreliable at 30 and I have to bump it up to 60 frames per second to reliably capture the strobe. And what I'm seeing through the screen, it's picking up the strobe flash. Much better than it would a xenon strobe. that off one more time to see how long it takes. Very interesting. Okay, I think that's enough of the ceiling mount. Let's check out the wall mount. Here's the base to this guy, which from the factory, this bar was actually stuck making it trouble free even though there's not a device so I actually had to poke it down manually
And there you see the trouble clears, and if I let go, it'll go back. Put our device on. One up, put it at 95 Candela. This one at high, so it might be brutal. Yep, she's loud. Brighter too. But let's turn it all the way up. That's all the way down. Hundred and eighty five. Work that hurts to look at. Yep, that's a bright strobe. Not any brighter by Candela, but it does flash longer, so it definitely picks up better on camera. And you can actually see it stay illuminated slightly longer. As far as the tones go, they are all the same as the previous L-Series, except that these also have that Temporal 4 on whether it's Temp 3 High, Temp 3 Low, Temp 3 3K High, or Temp 3 3K Low those all also have temporal four, which I don't think I have a way to set that off. So as far as I can show and demonstrate, it's the same. So that's about all I can give you for our actual test of these devices. However, let me know if there's anything else you guys want me to show you. I do think, though, there is definitely some other... Nick does not know that there already is ex in existence, or there is some big changes coming to sync options on panels that are going to support these new devices. So new panels as far as these new settings for not only the horn, but the strobe. The horn as in having this temporal four and three combined so it will be able to do fire and carbon monoxide evacuation tones from the same device that's going to be huge and i'm not sure if for the temp four if it would still flash the strobe or if it wouldn't i don't know that could be really interesting to see and the strobe being coded or um, selected from the fire alarm panel is what i would think that is much like what Simplex does with the ES series. In another video in the future, I will show off those voltage test points. I think it should be pretty self-explanatory, but if anyone wants to see that, let me know. My conclusion on these devices is I actually like them. At first, I didn't like the appearance of the wall version, but now seeing it in person, it's fine. Not that it matters anyways, it's just a fire alarm. I mean, obviously, if it's super ugly, this looks close enough to the old one, and they still look good. They, they're still... A, good looking device. If anything, they are slightly lower profile. Let's compare them to the older versions. And here you go. So another thing, I would think this is almost back to advanced style. In that, I mean that this is legal to be on the ceiling. A lot of people don't realize it, but the advanced series of alarms, even a wall mount version, strobe for example here, that device is legal to be ceiling mounted. L series is not a 360 degree strobe. That cannot be ceiling mount. This is not obstructed. I would think, though it would look goofy, this is back to how the advance was with being legal on the ceiling, I would think. These do have a, this has a bigger horn grill as well. The ceiling mount is now much lower profile say the wall mount is any more low profile because though the strobe is smaller the, the whole device is uh as you can maybe tell thicker 
interesting to open these guys up and look inside, but that would be another video to see the differences. So let me know if you guys would want to see that. Can actually see these strobes being more durable. It's a much smaller chunk of plastic and it feels like a thicker, feels like a thicker lens than these guys are just thin. This seems like more of a solid hunk. There's pretty much nothing making them worse. Originally, as I said earlier, I thought that they weren't going to be listed for FWR as it wasn't on the original listing. However, since that's been changed, there is absolutely no cons to the new devices unless you don't like their looks, which is a personal thing. And as far as them being installed in a building doesn't matter because most people are not going to have any clue of the difference. So a little recap of the differences and mostly advantages in my opinion is you now have voltage test points lower current draw longer lasting strobe potentially interchangeable strobe lenses in my opinion a more durable looking device as far as the strobe goes new ability to work with sync protocols for the horn and the strobe on newer panels i would think should be a longer lasting strobe not that there's too many problems with the xenon burning out but it can happen it is nice that we will finally be getting a refreshed outdoor version because we've still been installing the the system sensor advanced maybe some other things that i am forgetting to mention but that is what i can think of for right now and just to add something here this is the replacement device list of what these led variants are replacing so if you want to have a look at this feel free to pause the video and take a look but with that i believe that is it for this video i believe there was also more things i wanted to say that i can't think of right now there was a lot i wanted to cover in this video there's many more changes than what first comes to the eye with these devices and a lot of people have not acknowledged that that there are so many changes actually behind the scenes that you probably didn't know about and I didn't know about until looking deeper into the data sheet. Even between the L series and the advanced, nobody ever talked about what happens during a reverse polarity condition, which I find to be really interesting and really important if you're gonna be working on the devices to know what devices do what and how they act in those situations is really crucial for troubleshooting. So I wish they'd make that more obvious on their website that's just my thoughts. Anyways, guys, I think that's it for this video. I also think there's more, but I just have to move on. So if you guys did enjoy it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you do have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those down in the comment section. And if you'd like to see more videos on these devices, let me know whether you want to see a teardown of actually looking at what is inside of these devices or comparing them to other older L series Whatever you want to see, let me know and I will definitely take note and uh, it might happen. So yeah, that's going to do it for this one. If you do enjoy my channel, make sure to subscribe. And if you are interested, I do have an Instagram account at Pickle700 for bonus content, content posted earlier than you'd see it on the YouTube channel, that sort of thing. Alrighty guys, thanks for watching.